Hey everybody, I'm Chris at Cutdown42 and welcome to Trivia Time. Today, I'm going to be talking about Super Mario RPG, the SNES. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Each member of the Axum Rangers is designed to be an evil counterpart to a member of Mario's team. Axum Red being the leader and having balanced stats across the board is Mario's counterpart. Axum Green, an offensive magic specialist, is Malo's counterpart. Axum Black, a strong and quick fighter with poor defenses, is Gino's counterpart. Axum Yellow, a powerful and resilient but slow fighter, is Bowser's counterpart. And Axum Pink, the only woman who is a healer with some offensive and status magic to boot, is Peach's counterpart. In official artwork, Boya has red eyes, however his in-game sprite has blue eyes. Exor is the only boss in the game, excluding the Yardovich clones, who is not immune to the Gina Wells instant kill effect, which means he can be defeated in one turn. Punchinello is named after Punchinello, a short fat buffoon who appears in several Italian puppet shows. Punchinello's introduction, Nello. Punchinello, a slacker reference to James Bond's catchphrase of being Bond, James Bond. Translator Ted Woolsey originally wanted to name him James Bond, which explains why Punchinello introduces himself this way, but management refused to allow it. And that isn't the only cultural reference that Punchinello makes, because right before releasing his Mezzo Bombs, he shouts, It's clobbering time! Which is likely a reference to the Thing's catchphrase. Smithy was a character nominated for Best Villain in the 1996 Nintendo Power Awards. He received 3rd place, Smithy lost to Bowser from Super Mario 64 who received 2nd place, and Boba Fett from Star Wars Shadows of the Empire who received 1st place. Valentina can cast a total of 9 spells, more than any other boss in the game. The Toad Minister that later appears in Paper Mario may in fact be the Chancellor of Super Mario RPG, as the roles are nearly identical and they are the same title in the Japanese versions of the games. The same thing could apply to Dvorsky and the Toad in the Desert of Paper Mario. As both of them are composers, and in a similar manner to how Tversky needs actual music, the Toad in the Desert seeks lyrics. Frog Futures' name is a combination of the words Frog and Confucius, the latter of which is the name of a famous Chinese philosopher. Midas Falls and Midas River get their names from King Midas from Greek mythology, who was a king who turned everything he touched to gold. These names are fitting considering these areas are filled with golden coins for Mario to grab. After defeating Boyer, if you stay at the inn in Rosetown, Link will be found sleeping in the opposite bed. If you try to torture him, the Secret Discover jingle will play. Similarly, after defeating Yadovich, Samus can be found sleeping in the Mushroom Castle's guest room. If you torture her, she'll say she's resting up from other brain. In the second ship, the password is pearls. However, in the Japanese version, the password is aquarium. At Star Hill, various wishes can be read. Wish I had some cricket jam belongs to our Fuchsias, and this is a hint to a side quest involving cricket jam. Once completed, the wish will change to I wish for everyone to be happy. Can't wait star family belongs to Raz. And I hope my baby's cute belongs to Rainy. I wish I were in such a crybaby belongs to Mallow. If I could just get that melody belongs to Tchaikovsky. The hunger over some food belongs to Balum. I want to be a world class baker belongs to Chef Tort. Please let Mallow find his way home belongs to Mallow's parents. And after Mallow has been reunited with them, the wish changes to May Mallow fix the road. I want to be the best treasure hunter in the world belongs to the treasure hunting toad in Moleville. Wish I could run faster belongs to Yoshi. I hope I become famous belongs to Punchinello. And finally, I want to be a great plumber like my brother Mario belongs to Luigi. The name of the arrow enemy, Arrow, is never revealed until the battle against Smithy at the end of the game. The citizens of Rosetown simply refer to them as arrows, while a group of arrows are credited as Billiard's flunkies shortly before Gino shows up. The Arachne Psychopath quote refers to the song Deo, also known as the Banana Boat Song, which makes a reference to a deadly black tarantula. The 
artichoke is named comes from an artichoke flower, a perennial flower native to the Mediterranean region. The Big Bertha enemy shares its name with a cheap cheap enemy from Super Mario Bros. 3. Nintendo Power forgot to list Greeper's stats in the Super Mario RPG Nintendo Player's Guide. The reason they gave was that Greeper wasn't an enemy, even though that this is false. The Microbound Psychopath taught, Small is as small does, is a reference to the 994 film Forrest Gump, in which the titular character's catchphrase is, Stupid is as stupid does. The Octolot enemy bears a striking resemblance to the Octorock enemy from the Legend of Zelda series. The Orb uses Psychopath taught, states that it hates Kinklings, however, it's never revealed why exactly it does hate Kinklings. Finally, the Shire Ranger is the only enemy in the whole game who is immune to all four elements. Early screenshots show that the game went under numerous changes before the final release. For example, the Chancellor was originally a grey spotted elderly looking toad. The Buzzer enemy was originally going to appear in Mushroom Way, but was moved to the Forest Maze in the final game. Lakitu, Booze, and a Magic Ebook were all originally going to appear in Booster's Tower. There was originally going to be a scene where Mario would fight two Shireways at Bowser's Castle. There was also originally going to be a scene in a dining room where Luigi would make an appearance. By hacking the game's code, multiple unused enemies can be found. One of these enemies is Drillbit, who does appear in the game, but he's never actually fought. There's also an unused underwater battle arena in the game's code as well. There's also an unused cutscene in the game's code of Mario and Peach being held captive. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you all next time on Trivia Time. Hey guys, glad to be here, big old thumbs up. And if you want to see some more Trivia Time episodes, track from the thumbnails on the screen.